Oh, here we go. We got we got something here. Let's see what we got here. Who's knocking at the door? Is that you, Lionel? Yes, sir. How are you doing this evening, Jeff? Man, thanks so much for being patient and tuning in. What again? What what can you do if you're if you're researching, starting out? What can you do to begin to build that foundation that is so important to set well, the and first, build upon? First thing, first thing I look at, Jay, is a, is the uh, business structure. When you look at the business structure of an organization, it means practically everything to a uh, um, a trucking company because um, with, with with that not taken into consideration, it could cost you a lot of money. Okay. The main thing ab- about that is the um, is, is 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 where you're going to have your business. Uh, based on where you're going to have your business, it's a great thing about living in America. You can have it anywhere. You can set your business up anywhere you want. So if you stop, take a little bit of information, make the decision where you're going to have your business could be predicated on what you're going to pay in insurance. Are you in the city? Are you in a rural area? Where are you setting? Where are you parking your trucks? It means everything. If the people aren't prepared, I will, you know, advise them that they should take a, a sharper look at, at themselves before, you know, we move forward with the process. And you, you're right. I, I do go through a list of, of specific things. I, I have them go back, look at the credit as the number one, because they're going to evaluate you through credit uh, by way of Experian right now. That's uh, progressive. The reason why I say progressive, um, they're the main ones who write new entrants. Um, they're not the only one that writes new entrants. There are other organizations that do write new entrant policies, but you're going to find them being much higher. Uh, progressives more understanding of the industry itself. I've had an opportunity to talk to the underwriters, uh, make some communications with them, and they've been able to educate me on the preparation to uh, prepare my customers for their policy. Progressive is dabbling in fleets right now. They 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 want to take on fleets, but they're they're mostly focused on new entrants. Uh, companies are going between one and six uh, uh, trucks right now, so they'll let you build up. They won't let you build up too fast, but uh, you, you know they'll let you add on trucks as you move on in the industry. And uh, they are looking at your safer rating also during the period of time that you have your policy, just as with your customers also. So you have to be careful about that. Uh, I make a rest, uh, recommendation of a risk management program for all my small companies that are out there. Uh, they have to go through all their, their regular preparations, but they have to do it in tenfold. Because if you have your own safety program in place, it only enforces what the DOT inspector is going to do when he pulls you over. Probably what? When you get when, given actuarial tables and statistics, uh, there's just a higher probability of either theft or accident in a city. I mean, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, that's that's basically what we're talking about. The foundation of just insurance in general right. is you, you got more cars, you're going to pay higher insurance. Right, right. Okay. In, high, in highly populated places, more... Um, more uh, of, the, of the ability to have accidents, uh, more dangers, and, and everything like that there around. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, let's when, I, oh. when, I, when I originally started and did the uh, my, my due diligence, uh, I actually set up out near Mannheim, Pennsylvania, right at the uh, auction. I didn't have a problem with the insurance company because it made practical sense. They said, hey, if that's where you're picking the cars up, that's that's fine. That's good. That's good to, and that's another thing that I like that I mean you're you're located you're located in Devon PA near about the Mannheim, right? That's a great location. Yeah, it's 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 probably about 65 miles out, which is a, a good distance, which is it turned into no distance at all after you got used to going up there. Really this this is something that was very important to me and what we discovered in the industry, and 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 I just want to say this to to, to all your 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 uh, viewers this evening, all your listeners. Um, let's take a look at this in a practical venue. Uh, when that DOT officer pulls you over, he's not going to change hats and say, "You know what? You you don't have a commercial truck here. I'm going to put on another hat and evaluate you differently." He he's not going to do it. He's going to he's going to rule you under those same DOT regulations 
and you're going to be have to be educated and know how to do everything that everybody that's on a, a commercial truck is doing. So I would advise uh, you can at least get to the point where you're getting a permit. Uh, in the state of Pennsylvania, I don't know outside of Pennsylvania, but it costs forty nine fifty to go in and take your uh, CDL permit. And at least that'll give you an up on what to do in that situation. But the foundation of it is uh, you need a 10,000 GVWR rated trailer on the back of your, your, your vehicle. And if you have that combined with a, you, you can actually have a 26,000 pound tr- uh, tractor or a 26,000 pound dually and put those two together. It sounds like it's over the CDL requirement, but it's not because everything is in the, in the trailer. It's the combination Wait, everybody's making the assumption of 26,000 pounds. And the reason I tell you this, Jay, is not that I, you know, I'm a know-it-all or, or I read as much. Guys, I'm, I'm working off of uh, uh, mistakes. I went to pick my trailer up, and I got educated by the DOT officer that pulled me over. That's where I got that from. Yikes. Um, I, I make a recommendation of after you bought your truck, after you bought your trailer, after you pay for your insurance, uh, you need to have a good five to ten thousand dollars saved up because it's going to take you a time to build up the reputation through your auto dealers. And it's great you guys are going to have an auto dealer on here tonight. That is that is key. That is key to your business. But you're going to have to work on your relationships to build that up. And um, you know that a lot of people are not going to pay you immediately. And, uh, you know, you, if you try to run the, your business on the foundation of the boards, you, you're going to go out of business real fast. But it takes time and, you know, look forward to losing a little bit of money over a nine-month period until you can build your, yourself up. It takes time. It takes time. Well, and you've been there. You're speaking from experience, too, which is really cool. Oh. Who's your best client? I mean, what, what's the majority, the bulk of your <laughs> clients? It's, it's mostly the smaller trucking companies, you know, the guys who make up 80% of the stuff that's moved on the road right now. Uh, smaller fleets, one to, one to nine tr- uh, truck fleets. Uh, I love those guys. I, I'm, I'm here to make sure they stay in business and maintain business. I, I just don't sell them a policy, and most of the guys that, that know me, uh, they, they'll tell you. I call them and I check on them, make sure they're doing gr- great, make sure their family's doing great. Um, it's, you know, to me, it's it's... You know, you're 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 making uh, um, uh, a friend. You, you know, you're making friends out here, and, and, and you're, you're networking, and you're keeping the guys together. I introduce other truckers to other because it's cold out there, two o'clock in, in the morning, and you get pulled over on a DOT stop, and the guy tells you that look, this is a commercial truck. You're under, you're over twenty six thousand pounds, and you don't know, and they got to come down. You got to call somebody to pick you up. <laughs> because you're out of service or something like that. So I, I make sure I connect the guys and network and everybody knows who's out that night. In your second year, you're, you're, you're considered open for other uh, insurance companies because they want to see your loss runs over the year to uh, qualify you for new rates. So that is exciting. So if you make it through the first year of not making any money <laughs> or little to no money, there, there, there's you know a little light at the end of the tunnel there. Yeah. So that means like if, if I've made it a year, I've been paying stupid premiums. I caught Jay's show and I heard of a guy named Lionel. I just send you my loss run ratio or what do I, how does that work? You send you send me the loss runs, um, you know, any, any damages or anything that happened during the year, if everything comes back clean uh, or, you know, or everything comes back small, they'll give you the evaluation and give you credit for that. Uh, also guys, you're, uh, electronic logging device comes into this too. I forgot to mention it. Uh, there's anywhere from a three to eighteen percent discount uh, that you can get by allowing them act to have access to your electronic logging device uh, data, and they'll uh, they'll opt. You know, they'll 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 test it and see how your drivers are doing. So uh, it works great. You get a discount. You get an immediate discount of three percent, and then after thirty days, they'll come back and evaluate you and. The average person is getting at least 11 percent off of it. Try to get try to get a better understanding of his preparation before he applies for insurance. 
which is instead a, of just going and asking for a, a rate based on where they are and not knowing the foundation of having good credit at the same time, they'll, they will kill you and then they won't tell you why they gave you the high rate. And that's what I think we see a lot in Facebook is people have come back with the result without knowing what in, what went into the recipe for that bad number. Exactly. And that's why that building falls down. That That's why you get the high rate and uh, they're, you know, you're shopping, but there's a limitation of where you can shop because there's not a lot of people out there that wants new entrants. A new, new entrant payment terms are normally coming back at about 20% down okay. uh, with the, with the 10 month payment period. Uh, but there are discounts for shorter pays. If you want to pay six months up front, there's a discount. And if you want to pay for the whole year, there's a significant di uh, discount. Uh, there's also a discount for um, automatic withdrawal if, if you like to, 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 to do that. Yeah, I, I would say any, any, you're talking, if, 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 if we need an interpretation based on commercial rates, it's in the thousands for that yearly payment. It's in the thousands when that, when you pay up front for six months. Okay. Watch this, though. So I heard Lionel say 20% down. Did I hear that? Yes, indeed. Okay, so I hear guys on a regular basis. Man, my quote came back twenty five thousand a year. Mm -hmm. So it's five grand down, and then ten mm -hmm. payments, right? Yes, indeed. So if the guy's wanting to get in the business, he gets the quote, and he's got five grand in his pocket. But he's thinking, man, if I give them the five grand, I got insurance. Now I can go run and make enough money to make my truck payment and my trailer payment then hopefully save up enough money to make my insurance payment next month. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, a lot of guys, a lot of guys are definitely trying to get in like that. Yeah. So you run into those guys. Yeah. And that's why I, I check their financial uh, status at that time. Uh, make sure they're, you know, they're, they're financially stable or, you know, if they're trying to do it with, with, you know, glue and, in, in paper clips, uh, I, I kind of shy away from that because, uh, you know, they're, they're not going to be in business. It's not going to be good for me. It's not going to be, be good for them. Yeah. Well, and I think that sends a big message, in my opinion, to the people wanting to get into the business that just kind of fly yeah. by the seat of my pants. I want to get in to hear, to hear a guy say, no, it's not quite how it goes. Makes me feel good. Well, because, uh, I mean, I've been there. I, I You know, I, I feel bad for a lot of guys who, you know, they, they're excited. They want to get out here and they want to do something. But even guys in those positions, I would make the recommendation to go jump on that truck and learn everything that you can. Another uh, driver, uh, ride, with, ride it out with them for about six weeks to get some experience and really see if you really want to do it. Yeah, definitely. I always tell people, go talk to five car dealers and call me back. And nobody ever calls me back. <laughs> yeah. I actually had a guy get into business, went out, bought a five-car trailer, um, you know, got a dually, hooked it up, did everything the right way, uh, hired his driver, hooked up the electronic logging device, got his apportion tag, his ISTA stickers, had everything straight inside the trailer. Got pulled over by DOT, and the driver got put out of service because he didn't backlog the six days that he he did not write down that he said he had off because it was his first day in business. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that that hit his uh, safer rating, and after that, he got uh, he he couldn't qualify to haul for one of the major haulers. So you, you guys got to be careful of that. So you know you got to be real detailed. In, in your preparations, you got to be extremely detailed in your preparations because the DOT inspector is going to be detailed in his preparations when he pulls you over for that level one. I'm very busy. I'm, I'm always troubleshooting uh, just from the perspective that guys are, are, are calling me who are already in and are already my customers. But uh, I'm also open for people asking questions. Um, you know, questions are free. It doesn't cost Anything to uh, have a communication, to get an understanding. You don't have to pay for insurance. And I'll make another recommendation for new entrants also. There's a 21-day uh, period for your uh, cooling period for your DOT and MC number. 
So during that period of time, you don't have to file for your insurance until at the end of the 21-day period, which normally lasts about 30 days because they don't include the, the weekends or holidays for dates. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a tip there to give you a uh, preparation. So you can file your DOT and your MC number and wait until you get to the end uh, to make sure all your preparations are in place for your insurance. 